Oh, that was not the news that I wanted to wake up to this morning. Four-star quarterback Jaden Rashada has flipped from the Miami Hurricanes to the Florida Gators. We'll talk about the fallout and what Miami has left. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you, even in these toughest of times, whether we're taking L's on the field or off the field, thank you for still making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Underdog. Sign up on underdogfantasy.com with the promo code Locked On and get your first deposit doubled up to $100. Well, here we are. Huge recruiting dub for G5 Billy. I guess I can just call him Billy Napier today out of respect, but yeah, big win for Billy Napier, uh, a loss for Mario Cristobal and his staff today. Jaden Rashada, you know, it was a battle between Miami and Florida. Initially, June 26th, he verbally committed to the Miami Hurricanes. And then in the early morning hours of November 11th, he decommits from Miami and commits to the Florida Gators. And this one hurts, okay? We'll talk about why it hurts, but we'll talk about also why, you know, not, not all hope is lost because Miami still does have – one of the best quarterbacks in the class still committed, even if Jaden Rashada is not, because Emory Williams is not chopped liver, and this presents an even bigger opportunity for him. But yeah, losing Rashada, it's tough. I, I was I was depressed to wake up to that. But the first thing here we got to remember, guys, and we're all Miami Hurricanes fans here. I'm a fan who also happens to be a media guy with a platform, and I try to use this platform for good, not for evil, Okay. Let's all be respectful to Jaden Rashada. And if you're going to say anything, wish this young man the best. All right? If, if you want to just say nothing, that's fine. But if you're going to say anything, wish him the best. Be respectful. I don't want us to be the type of fans that trash these players for making the best decision for them just because it's not the best decision for you. Don't be selfish here. He's the one who's actually... The player, he's going through this process. He wants to find the best situation for his past, present, and future. Well, present and future, I think the past is already written. Uh, and yes, yeah, fans, we want the best players to play for our team, and we're mad when they don't. But, you know, don't put yourself over him. It's his life, all right? This is his decision. We have to respect that he made the decision. He feels is best for him and for his family. Uh, even our guy, John Ruiz, very classy. He quickly tweeted his well wishes to Jaden, and we all need to follow John's lead on this one. Uh, and as far as Rashada decommitted, um, you know, I I had been hopeful over the past week, week and a half, because I, I got what I thought was some reassuring news about this. But for those who watch the show every day, I have said on a handful of occasions that, you know, out of the class of 2023 20, guys, that's the one who concerns me the most because he's been very quiet. OK, because out of Miami's then 20 verbal commits, I think we're down to 19 now. or It's right around that area uh, out of out of all these verbal commits. Rashada had been the quietest, the most mysterious and the most difficult to read. In hindsight, this has probably been on his mind for a long time, whether he was really secure and set with his Miami decision. That probably explains why he's been so quiet lately. This is one of the best quarterbacks in the class of 2023. So I will not try to spin this. I'm not going to do a show about how, hey, this is why this guy's not that good and we're not really missing out on anything here. No, I think we're missing out on something here. It hurts to lose this player, especially to Florida. About a week and a half ago, I said on this show that I thought, hey, Rashada is looking like a big winner after that Virginia game because he might be able to come in here and compete for starting quarterback job as a true freshman next year. That's not going to work out, of course. So all we can do right now is we can hope that this one is an isolated case and not the start of something bigger, right? Because I know, you know, the Gator fans, they're all taking their victory laps, right? The same way we were taking our victory laps after Cormani McLean a couple of weeks ago. They're taking their victory laps now. They're doing all these spaces, Twitter spaces, 
uh, you know, I, I wasn't up late enough enough to be on it. I was asleep before midnight. I had to wake up to this awful news today. But, you know, I know a couple folks, uh, you know, were, were on those Twitter spaces last night. And the CEO of the Gator Collective, you know, he's all he's all confident and cocky right now, as he should be. He's talking about, oh, they're not done flipping Miami guys. Like, listen, I'm sure they were pretty confident about getting Cormani before he came over here. And I'm sure they're still going to keep trying to to get McLean. I'm sure they'll try and flip Malik Bryant because that was one of the players they were battling with uh, Miami for before he committed to Miami. And, you know, they'll probably try for Francis Maui Goa as well. He's one of the crown jewels of this class who's a Miami commit. Uh, so they're, they're going to be coming for all of our guys. Now, I do take some comfort in still, uh, and I mentioned that Rashada has been the least vocal out of all the Miami verbal commits, right? He's been the least vocal. Uh, the other guys still appear to be solid. You never say never, right? Because until they actually sign their national letters of intent, everybody is up for grabs, okay? Um, we're going to find out in the coming weeks how solid the rest of this class is. And so there was actually uh, the group chat that they have, all the 2023 Miami commits, they're in a group chat together. And part of that was actually revealed uh, to Kane Sport, and kudos to – my guys, Gary Furman and Matt Shodell, who do an awesome job at Kane Sport, uh, they actually were able to publish part of that group chat, and they got some comments from a couple of the 2023 Miami commits. So this is what Jaden Rashada, he wrote a message to the 2023 group about 45 minutes before he officially flipped. Uh, he said to the group, appreciate every one of y'all, wishing y'all the best of luck throughout y'all careers. Go be great, he said. Uh, and a couple of Miami's committed players who say that they're rock solid commented on it uh, on this story. Uh, defensive back Robert Stafford, four-star cornerback, said, no hard feelings, it's nothing personal. This won't affect any of the other commits, he says. But we do want to win. So we need a quarterback like Jaden Rashada. We'll still be good, he said. We're not stressing about it at all. One player is not going to define what we have going on, he said. We're friends, so I do wish him the best. He's doing what he thinks is best for him and his family. Frankie Tinelau, three-star offensive tackle, commented on this. He says, I'm all in with Miami. I thought we all were. But this is the way it is nowadays. You can never be too sure. We have to remain focused, have to bring the recruits a bit more closer, he said. Uh, another offensive lineman commit, the center, Connor Liu, also says that the Rashada impact is negligible on him and this class, I think he was asked if, if he's wavering. He said, absolutely not, was his quote. Okay, so, you know, it's it's going to be a wild ride here. Um, and the quarterback position now and in the future, uh, it, there's a lot of things up in the air. Now, we are going to devote a lot of time on this episode to what Miami still has in the class. And I believe he is solid and is probably even more solid knowing now he's the guy in the class of 2023, Emory Williams. Emory Williams, who was one of the better stories, kind of coming out of nowhere, bursting on the scene, having a really good Elite 11 finals over the summer and just finished uh, his high school career in Milton with a six touchdown pass game in his final high school game. So he's got a lot of momentum trending up for him. Uh, but you look at the quarterback situation in the present, um, you know, Jake Garcia has struggled mightily. Tyler Van Dyke has had some good moments on the field, some really bad moments on the field, and he's been injured. And now we're kind of figuring out who and what Jakari Brown is for the future. Uh, and we don't know who might hit the portal for next year. You know, I, in the case of Tyler Van Dyke, I don't think he's leaving for the NFL uh, based on the way this season went. So he's either going to be back in Miami or, you know, maybe hits the portal, depending on how things shape out. Uh, and with Emory Williams coming in and, you know, Peyton Matoka has been here for 100 years and he's never really sniffed the field. So I don't think either, you know, the previous coaching staff and the current coaching staff don't seem to have too much faith that this guy can actually compete to be a starter at Miami. So got a lot of open space here. So you have to wonder, does Miami try to get another quarterback in this class or more likely, I think, do they try to get a veteran in the transfer portal? But we will devote some time to Emory Williams when we come back. And we're going to devote some serious time here to, you know, the fallback, uh, the fallout. Should there be any here? Like, is there, you know, a specific coach to be blamed for losing out on Rashada? Is this all about what's happening on the field? I'm sure that has something to do with it. 
Uh, you know, people need to be held accountable for this. We'll talk about that right after we talk about the awesome folks at Underdog Fantasy. I'm having so much fun playing underdog and winning real money each and every week, my friends. It's so easy to sign up. Underdogfantasy.com or the Underdog mobile app. Create your account. You make your selections in seconds, guys. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to spice up college football season. I love doing the pickums every single week in college football. Whether you're doing your pickums on Miami Hurricanes players or players going up against Miami or anyone in the country, I've got a couple of selections on Underdog that I'm really hot on for this week. Okay. It's all about the Daniels this week. So I am going to go with. LSU quarterback Jaden Daniels higher than 271 and a half passing yards against Arkansas. The Razorbacks are 129th in America in passing yards given up per game. And then on the flip side with a different Daniels, I'm going with West Virginia quarterback JT Daniels lower than 261 and a half passing yards against Oklahoma. Daniels' stats have been all over the place. He only threw for 81 yards last week, and Oklahoma has an average passing defense. So I think uh, that Daniels will go lower than 261, and LSU's Daniels will go higher than 271 and a half passing yards. So go to Underdog and make your own picks, whether you want to use mine, fade mine, or make your own. It's easy to play and available in over 30 states. You just pick between two and five players across any team, not just your Canes, and decide if they're going to finish higher or lower. One of the easiest fantasy to play games out there, and you can win cold, hard cash in a single game. Sign up with our promo code Locked On. That's one word. And Underdog will double your first deposit up to 100 bucks. Deposit 100 bucks, get 100 bucks free. Go to underdogfantasy.com or find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store or the Google Play Store. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code Locked on. Get in on the college football pick em action today. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. So what will the fallout be? Jaden Rashada flipping from Miami to Florida. So surely Mario Cristobal knows better than we do as to why this flip actually happened. But I think it's safe to assume that Miami's results on the field and their offensive struggles and their inability to score a touchdown over nine quarters has got to have something to do with this, okay? I mentioned we've seen some good and some bad from Van Dyke this year, and he's been hurt recently. Um, Jake Garcia, unfortunately for us and for him, has gotten worse, not better. So he could be a candidate to hit the transfer portal, no doubt about that. Uh, so... If Mario Cristobal has come to the realization, if he has come to this realization that a lot of the fans have come to, that his offensive coordinator or any member of his offensive staff is the reason for this flip, depending on the situation, you might need to fire someone. That's part of Mario's role as the CEO. That's his job to make that decision. And everyone talks about Mario's making $80 million, 10 year contract. Uh, obviously Mario's not going to be fired. No, nor, nor do I think he should be, by the way. I do not think he should be, but Mario's not going to be fired today, tomorrow, or anytime soon. But given he has all that money, all that power, and all that responsibility, he's got way too much responsibility and pressure not to get this right from his end. He's the CEO. He needs to decide which members of his front office, a.k.a. his coaching staff, are getting the job done and who isn't and there's way too much money pressure at stake here for him not to make some tough decisions if that's what he has to do here, okay? That's part of being the CEO. This chain is only as strong as your weakest link. If there's someone on this staff that's holding you back on the field in recruiting or both, you cannot afford to keep that person here. So if this gets us closer to a tough decision being made by Cristobal as to how to tweak this staff and make it better and learn from whatever mistakes you might have made in hiring a staff last year. Hopefully, if we're looking for light at the end of the tunnel, hopefully what happened here with Rashada, and this, listen, they may decide it's just one of those things that happens. You can't keep everybody. It's hard to keep two quarterbacks in the same class both locked in you know I, I don't know they they may decide this is just something that was out of our control and wish him the best of luck or if there's more to it than that if there's more to it behind the scenes and if somebody failed here 
whether it's on the field, off the field, or both, if somebody failed here, that might force Mario Cristobal to make a tough decision. And I hope and expect he has the wisdom to get that decision right, okay? So let's talk about the good news. Well, actually, there, there's a couple pieces of good news here. Good news number one is, uh, you know, remember uh, our guy John Ruiz and Life Wallet. I'm sure had a hefty package put together for Jaden Rashado once he arrived at Miami. This does free up that budget, okay? So, you know, I know that there's a certain amount that uh, that Ruiz and Life Wallet are willing to pay out for NILs. It's like a set amount that they kind of have like a, a, a ceiling on it. And so with Jaden Rashada decommitting and going to Florida, this frees up a pretty sizable part of your budget. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see if, uh, you know, if, if other players can be lured in uh, after Rashada was uh, was lured away by Florida. But, you know, the bigger piece of good news here is because this is this is something more tangible. Um, you know, and you could say this is me deflecting or whatever, but I do think this is good a good opportunity to talk more about Emery Williams. Emery Williams, who is a Miami commit, was an Elite 11 finalist over the summer. He's still locked in for the class of 2023 from Milton High School in Milton, Florida, out in the panhandle. He had a surprisingly good showing at the Elite 11 finals over the summer because when he was invited to that, a lot of people were like, well, what's this guy doing here? Like, yeah, does he really need to be here? Is he one of the best of the best? He proved his worth there. I'll give you an example. Somebody who was saying really nice things about Amory Williams, and this clip has started to go around again on uh, college football Twitter. Josh Pate after watching Williams in person at Elite 11 and getting some extra access to him there, was positively wowed by Williams' cutting-edge mental evaluation techniques. Like, apparently, like, they, like Williams' coaches, like, practically made Pate, like, sign a waiver not to talk about this because there are certain things that Williams does, you know, with his uh, – with his mental evaluation that maybe other quarterbacks don't know about and aren't doing. So he praised him for that. And Pate also, you know, he praised his poise and maturity, described him as really well-spoken and really well put together and quote, the type of player you'd love to have in your class. Uh, Emory Williams is six foot four, 191 pounds. And this is somebody that uh, I know this going way back to the early parts of the summer. I started to talk to people about this. Emory Williams is someone that Miami quarterbacks coach Frank Ponce absolutely loves. And Ponce was one of the first Power 5 coaches to recruit him, that he was very much ahead of the curve, that a lot of coaches from other big-time schools didn't really give any notice to Emory until you know Frank Ponce in Miami was already all over him. So he was, he was ahead of the curve on this one. And you know I think that this is the type of player, and, and you know Emory Williams was down in Miami over the summer, uh, I think it was right around uh, the uh, Legends Camp, we call I was about to say Paradise Camp, but it's now called Legends Camp. And Williams was around Miami mm. during that week, and Ponce put in a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with him. And I think that the two of them can really click together. And, and who knows, if, if there is some sort of a, a change made in the offensive coaching staff, you know, may, maybe Ponce, because could stick around, could end up getting a promotion. So we'll see how that all plays out. But I know that Ponce and Emory Williams have a really good connection. You know, Williams, um, you know, the, the only thing that I don't love about him is just that, you know, in today's college football, it's gravitating so much more to, you know, the, the dual threat guys, right? I mean, we've, we've seen some of those guys this year, like Riley Leonard from Duke is, uh, you know, a, a pretty electric quarterback for college football because how dangerous he is with his legs in addition to his arm like pure dual threat guys like obviously we all remember Lamar Jackson you see Hendon Hooker right we're, we're like we're hoping that someone like Jakari Brown we're hoping he can develop into a dual threat guy because right now he's one dimensional as a runner more than a passer right so he's got the running ability we're hoping we're hoping he can develop the passing you know Emory Williams is more of not to say he can't move and that he's not a little bit mobile because he is. That would be unfair to him to say otherwise. But he's not really a dual threat guy. He's primarily a pocket passer. But that is something he excels in. He's got a very strong arm. We talked about his mental awareness. Uh, but he's got a really quick release. That's one of the notable things about him. So, um, you know, that's one of those ways. When you've got a, an accurate quarterback with a quick release, there's obviously a lot of potential you know, to mold that 18 year old into something special with the right coaching and right development that at the next level. So, 
you know, now, you know, we talked about a couple weeks ago, Jaden Rashada potentially being a winner because he could come in, could have come in and competed for a you know starting job right away. He's now going to be trying to do that at Florida. That conversation shifts to Emory Williams. How quickly can he do, he be developed? And I asked, um, by the way, I just got this, uh, just literally came into my inbox from uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, player evaluators I trust as far as high school evaluations. Brian Smith, one of my colleagues, just texted me on Williams pocket passer that can still throw on the run elite competitiveness natural leader during high school practices as well as during elite 11 he was at elite 11 watching him he is a 4.0 student by the way brian points out to me so i i like that i like the 4.0 students i i think that those those habits can translate uh, to their football preparation head coach raves about his desire to be great in everything and he's talking about his high school head coach the arm is above average more of a precision passer he says so that pretty much matches up with uh, with what I've taken away from Williams. But I, I like getting that from Brian because Brian has watched him multiple times in person. I have not. So I like that a lot about Emery. And yeah, there's going to be a lot more on his plate here with Jaden Rashada decommitting and flipping. And we all hope that this is the last one. All right. We're going to talk about some of the odds. Miami at Georgia Tech this week. Yeah, we still do have a game to play. Right. For so long this week, we we started out the week crying about the Florida State loss, which was catastrophic. We've been talking a lot of recruiting this week uh, and, of course, today with Jaden Rashada. But I do want to take a look at Miami as an underdog heading on the road uh, into Atlanta. You know, the team, they, they might be on their plane right now. In fact, they're traveling up to Georgia as we speak, getting ready to take on Georgia Tech. Hey, thanks for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. For your second listen today, check out Locked on Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only Locked on can provide. Locked on Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. Folks, did you know that over the holidays... Property crimes like burglaries and package thefts, I hate those, spike nationally. That's why our friends at Simply Safe Home Security are offering 50% off their award winning security system so that more families can feel safe and secure this holiday season. Order your Simply Safe system for half off today and enjoy advanced security and greater peace of mind this holiday season. Guys, I've been a proud Simply Safe customer for the last several months. What I love most about it is the cutting edge technology. You can monitor your own HD security cameras inside and outside your house right there on your mobile phone. You can watch that HD feed like you. I feel like I'm from the future now. Like it's amazing to be able to keep up with your own home and keep your own own home safe at all moments of the day. Okay, Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report for the third year in a row. In an emergency, 24-7 professional monitoring agents use Fast Protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify that the threat is real so you can go, you can get priority police response, which we all need, of course, because God forbid something really does happen. You need that quick response. Don't miss your chance to save big on the only security system I recommend. Get 50% off any new Simply Safe system at simplysafe.com slash locked on college today. This is their biggest discount of the year, so do not wait. That's simplysafe.com slash locked on college. There is no safe like Simply Safe. Thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. So, uh, Jaden Rashada, we wish you the best, my man. Unfortunate it couldn't work out with you committing to Miami. Uh, opportunity now for Emory Williams. And, and what do you guys... What do you guys think happens here is we're going to talk about the odds in a second, courtesy of Bet Online. What do you think happens next year? Um, I expect my prediction is I expect Rashada. Uh, well, not Rashada. He's already gone. Ooh, I respect. I, I expect Garcia <laughs> to hit the portal. Um, I think Tyler Van Dyke more than likely comes back. I'm leaning like 70 to 30 that he stays here and doesn't transfer. Um, you may need to make some kind of an offensive coaching change though. Uh, otherwise he may be out the door. 
uh, and Jakari Brown. I think Jakari Brown is going to be you know, still in that kind of situational flow next year if Tyler Van Dyke is back. But Emery Williams gets in here and he knows I can learn for one year. And then in 2024, I have a, a head-to-head competition with Jakari Brown for the start. That, that's how I see this playing out. I think Garcia will probably seek an opportunity elsewhere. I think Brown will stay. Uh, I, I lean to Tyler Van Dyke staying. And Emery Williams comes in thinking, uh, I learned this year and 2024 is my year. That's how I see it playing out. And how will it even play out, you know, just this uh, this Saturday? Um after what happened in, in Miami, you look at this line courtesy of betonline.net. Bet online. Today's episode is brought to you partly by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets are point and a half favorites. They're minus one and a half against Miami at home. Okay. Um, and I one of the reasons why the line is what it is now, Miami is 0 for 8 against the spread. There's it 0 for 9 now. They played uh, no 0, 0 for 0 for 8. They've played nine games, but there wasn't a spread for Bethune Cookman. So they're 0 and 8 against the spread this year. They've not covered all year long. Uh, still, like you could say, well, Miami's got a lot more talent than Georgia Tech. You would be right. Uh, so many of Miami's problems have been internal this season and injury wise this season. The offensive line being decimated doesn't help anybody this year and I think part of the reason why the Hurricanes are underdogs in this one is I believe Vegas is expecting Tyler Van Dyke not to play in this game that would be tough to expect him to play right I mean you know was injured from the Duke game missed the Virginia game tried to come back in the Florida State game and then tweaked that throwing shoulder on two different plays before he left the game like I don't see how Tyler plays this week. I'm sure he wants to. I don't see how I can understand like him really wanted to get out there against Florida state, but you know, you can't risk further injury against Georgia tech. I'm sorry. I don't think Tyler's going to play this week. And with Tyler not playing, what has Miami done without Tyler on the field? They've gone nine consecutive quarters without scoring a touchdown. So that's why Georgia tech's favored by a point and a half. Because, you know, the combination of Garcia and Jakari Brown, uh, Brown showing certainly more promise right now than Garcia has, but it's not getting the job done. Um, I would start Jakari Brown in this game, unless you've just decided the offensive line is too injured to keep him healthy, which really wouldn't be fair to either guy. But, you know, with Jakari being the true freshman, he's less equipped to kind of deal with that maybe, but he's also more mobile to deal with it. I would start Jakari Brown this week. Um, but, you know, folks, Miami hasn't covered spread all year. Um, I'm staying away from a Miami side of it on this spread. I'm staying away from it. If you think this is the one, this is the one Miami covers, go ahead. I am I will not be betting Miami plus one and a half. I might, though, bet the under. Now, there's also a question mark at quarterback for Georgia Tech. Jeff Sims may be back. He may not be. The over under for this game is 44. I think Miami's defense, you know, Florida State game notwithstanding, uh, I think Miami's defense is good enough to keep this a relatively low-scoring game from the Georgia Tech side, and I don't think Miami's offense is going to be good enough to put up big-time points. I'm taking the under 44. I feel pretty good about that. This is going to be a really low-scoring game, like uh, like a 17-13 type of game in either direction. I'm taking under 44 on this one. So that, that's what I'm looking at uh, for this game. You know, a couple others we look at around the country at Bet Online. Oh, my goodness, guys. <laughs> I know Nebraska is terrible. Have you seen this number? Michigan is favored by 30 and a half against Nebraska. <laughs> I, I see a number that big with two teams in the same Power Five conference. I'm always going to gravitate to the huge underdog. Like Nebraska has a 0% chance of actually winning the game outright, but I'll take my chances with a 30 and a half point spread. (laughs) That is obscene. (laughs) Nebraska is an embarrassment to college football. There's a, I feel like they can keep this one maybe within four touchdowns. So I I'd probably lean to Nebraska at plus 30 and a half against Michigan. That, that is an eye-popping number. That's usually the type of number you'd get like with 
Alabama against Vanderbilt or something on most years. That, that is wild. Uh, so, guys, make sure you check out the odds, the numbers, and the information at Bet Online where the game starts. All right, guys, let's keep our heads up. Let's hope uh, we can keep the rest of the 2023 class bought in and even add to it. We'll talk to you guys again. We'll talk tomorrow before the game on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.